their needs. They might solve a need you, a need you have. They might answer a question you've been wondering. Or they might open a door to thinking about something you haven't thought about before, or you have and you just didn't know how to get started with it. So the things I will be talking about today are four, four particular things. Um, the first is OSM vector data for your, uh, a specific extent or tags. So you're working in ArcGIS, you want a specific extent of OpenStreetMap data, and you only want certain information, certain tags uh, for that extent, and you want it in vector form in the file, geodatabase, feature dataset, paradigm, that works with all your other ArcGIS tools, analysis, spatial analyst, 3D stuff, network, that, those powerful workflows for why you're using this tool. Um, the second is a DIY planet file. So you go to GeoFabric, you're searching for your county or your state, and you discover that you have to download East North America or the Southwest, and that's huge. And you really wanted your county, you really wanted your slice of the state. Um, this desktop tool has a way for you to zoom into the extent you're interested in and create a planet file based on that extent and you can also download just the features you're interested in. So say you only want the streets for that planet file. You can select one of the streets and have it download that. So uh, that's powerful. And you can also guess that you can still load those planet files, say, from GeoFabric using our tools. We have a load OSM file tool that will take the planet file and translate it into, uh, a, feature, into a feature data set. Um, so that's really cool. And word of warning, if you try to do the whole planet, that's going to take a while. It's about 276 gigs uh, that GeoDatabase ends up being. So, you know, think, just because you can't do it, does your server have the capacity for it? Um, network analysis, so that's something we've been working on. And I actually, this morning, I pushed a beta, a new beta out. So we are developing um, a new set of these ArcGIS Editor of OpenStreetMap tools that are updated to work in ArcGIS 10.1, and it will have network analyst um, capabilities. So you're able to create a network data set from OpenStreetMap data. And again, of course, the network data set is only as good as the data in it, so don't be expecting it to tell you the fastest way to get somewhere if there's no speeds on your roads. But um, you know that's up to you. How good is that data? Well, that's what we're here talking about at this conference. But anyway, here's the tool you can use to do the analysis. And then finally, uh, we also have a server component. So I've been talking about desktop tools. We have a tool that lets you easily spin up feature services based on OpenStreetMap data. Um, but first, some context. So I'm talking about tools that are available at this URL. That will redirect you to our CodePlex site. Yes, it is on CodePlex. It is open source. We are moving to GitHub. We're in the process of doing that. But for now, we're on CodePlex. And it's open source. So although you do need ArcGIS, to run these tools, the extension itself is free and open source. So download free, run a little setup exe, there'll be a toolbox, a toolbox installed on your local machine, and then go for it. And there'll be tools, models, scripts, etc. in that toolbox. Um, yeah, and it is open source, join the project. Um, a lot of folks are asking questions on the forums, it's a great way to get information. Some folks are contributing documentation. Some folks uh, are helping us beta test. And we would love beta testers. Like I said, I pushed a new version this morning um, out. And it's pretty stable and strong. So we'd like some feedback on it. So uh, we'd love your feedback. And we have versions available for ArcGIS 10 and 10.1. The beta that I pushed out this morning is for 10.1. But the tool that's like the official vetted version that's not in beta is for 10. But I give the 10.1 tool a try because it's very stable and it's, it's got that network thing that the other one doesn't have. So we want, we want you, like Richard's slide said. Uh, yes, you need ArcGIS to use this. The good news is you can get ArcGIS desktop for $100 a year under our home use program. And you all might be saying, oh, 100 bucks, really? 100 bucks? Oh, come on. <laughs> come on. These are other things I found on Amazon you can get for $100. So get posters of Stan Lee. The Wild Bunch original movie poster signed Jim Carrey. Okay, yeah, they have their utility, but this is you know a year worth of GIS hardcore GIS tools. It's not bad. Um, all right, so we'll talk about these workflows briefly. First, um, so remember that first workflow I talked about getting vector data for a specific extent you're excited about with the specific OSM tags you're excited about. Now, 
to get data directly from OSM, not using a planet file, as you may know, there's a restriction, and it's not our restriction. You can only download 50,000 nodes at a time. So if you're going to try to do your county this way, you're going to get a little error that says, oh, that's too many nodes. Uh, so this is really if you're working in a small area. So you choose your extent, um, and you choose to, there's a checkbox that says extract all the tags. If you check the box, you'll get all the tags. Um, you can update, it, it's all done through a model, and you can update the model to get specific tags. So if you always are downloading only specific tags and you don't care about the other ones, you can actually change that parameter in the model, and it'll always do exactly what you want it to do. And the reason we even have that checkbox there is uh, the way this model works is eventually it does translate those tags into columns in the ArcGIS attributes table for the feature class. And you'll see a lot of null values, because I mean, clearly the airport doesn't have like you know, a waterway value, you know, so that if you're extracting tags and it's trying to make a table, it's going to say null there. So that's why, you know, it's an option. Like some people like really streamlined tables with not lots of null values and so it's an option. Um, so then you select a file that you're going to out output it to and then you've got cool vector data in a feature database in ArcGIS. Um, and this is the, um, a screenshot of the model. I hope it's not scary. You know, nice UI, you can drag things, double click on them, open them up, change things. So there's an OSM attribute selector thing you double click on. And here's where you select the specific tags you're interested in. And by default, it's all. But if you're saying, I don't need all, I only want name, because name tells me lots. So I take out all, I put in name. And then from now on, my model runs and gets the names and doesn't get all. So you can, you can customize it, and it's powerful. If you want it to do something else when you run this model, you can throw in another little tool in there and say, not only download the data, but you know, turn it green or whatever you want to do with it. You know, so apply your own symbology to it is a better example. Uh, side note: so you saw in my screen here some nice background imagery. Where did I get that? So if you work in ArcGIS now, we provide base maps, and you can add base maps and then do your work. And Esri spends a lot of time, money, sweat. Uh, making these beautiful and easy and fast. Well, two of these base maps, the imagery and imagery of labels, are actually uh, done through a community base maps program, and many of these other ones are too, but these particular ones are ones you can digitize from. So if you want to contribute to OpenStreetMap and you legally want to <laughs> digitize, there's other things you can digitize from, of course, but these are ones that you know, you know you can do that, and you're not breaking any of the open database license stuff. And uh, so we have this great communities base map program where folks contribute imagery, contribute data, and um, then that gets put into the Esri base maps. And here you can use those for your open street map, uh, lower layers if you wanting to contribute specific areas of interest or things you want to add to open street map. And, um, just talking a little bit about the community base maps program, just, I know if you want to know more about that, like you know imagery you want to get into that program, or you have other things that you are interested in getting into the other base maps, this is where you get information on that. And actually Don Cook and Dean Kensock, they're here, they're heavily involved in that, and uh, I know there's actually some discussions on how to make this process such that you contribute to um, the community base maps program, how can we get that data possibly into OpenStreetMap. I don't know, Dean, did you want to talk a little more about that? Uh, I think that covers it pretty well, but we do have thousands of hardcore GIS users who have been sharing their data with us because they want to see it show up in these maps so they can use it freely themselves. And so we'd like to make it easier for them, if they're sharing data with us, to make it available broader to the OSM community or others. So mm -hmm. we're looking at ways now that we're migrating our program to make vector data more easily available for them to check a box and, and share it with OSM or others. Yeah, Don, did you come in? No, I was okay. Uh, okay. You know, the, the only thing I'd say about the imagery is that uh, Dean's group is going to be uh, bringing up some unbelievably great oh, yeah. um, uh, data from Digital World <coughs> in what, about three months or something like that. Hopefully less than that, yeah. Next, huge, next huge. month we'll be adding 30 centimeter imagery for the continental United States to that imagery map. Uh, so it'll be very detailed, uh, very current imagery that you can take advantage of for visualization or for use for uh, digital. Cool. Thank you very much. Yeah, so, okay, that, that's, a, that's an important side note. Um, thank you. So that's the first workflow. Now the next DIY 
OSM file. What do you do? So this lecture leverages the Zappy endpoint stuff. And there's a number of Zappy endpoints. Uh, do you all know about the Zappy endpoints, what this is all about? If you raise your hand if you know about the Zappy endpoints. OK, good. OK, so educational moment. Um, out there in the ether, there are people who are working hard on uh, providing other ways to connect to OpenStreetMap through a way where you can really um, get specific parts of it, part of that big OpenStreetMap.OSMXML. And you can do this through the Zappy interface, and it's spelled X-A-P-I. So we have a tool called the Download OSM Data Zappy Tool that can connect to one of these Zappy endpoints and get specific information from it to make a custom OSM file. So this is that use case where you want to make your own planet file. You don't need the whole eastern US. You need California, or southern California, or Oregon. So what you do is there's a little tool you bring up. You point to that Zappy endpoint. Um, and there's a list of them on the uh, wiki document for OpenStreetMap. So you go to OpenStreetMap documentation, search for Zappy. You'll find a list of the ones. They'll tell you which ones are up and working, which ones are not a good idea to use, yada, yada. And you choose one, and you put it into the tool interface. Then you select a predicate. Actually, this is the point where a screenshot might serve so well. So then uh, you define your, your extent that you're interested in, perhaps as specified below, or as what you see on the screen, or the same as another layer. You just There's many options in that extent box. Um, then you can say what kind of type you want. Are you interested in nodes, nodes, ways? Um, you know, what are you interested in? filtering on. And then you can actually put in a predicate. So this one says highway equals motorway, motorway link, um, trunk or primary, you know, whatever syntax you want to put on that you're interested in for a specific feature. And then you select an, an area, I mean select a file location where you're going to store your custom OSM file. So then you click OK. And now you've got there's a couple steps before this, but you've got a local.osm file and then you use the load OSM file tool to bring it into your interface as a um, feature classes that you can see. So here, this is the one with the motorway. So it really only got the specific highways, because that's what I did my predicate on. So this is Portland. Now, if I hadn't put that in, if I just said, I want everything, and I don't need it to be a motorway, it can be a point, it can be a house, whatever, this is kind of what it looks like. So symbology. Uh, you can change the symbology clearly. We provide symbology out of the box. Some of it's awesome, some of it's not. We have a really great little icon for nightclub. It's like a girl just swinging her hair. Um, and uh, there's other things that that icon represents. If you just open up the API, okay. But, um, but you can make your own. You can make your own icons and symbology. And this is what it's out of the box. And it's pretty impressive. So this is all vector data in ArcGIS that you can use um, in your ArcGIS workflows. And this is an OSM. Um, I know some file that's loaded in there that I made myself. The other thing is you can actually do routing on this now, which I think might be my next point. So we have a tool pushed out this morning on our beta. It's been pushed out before, but this morning it's really strong. Um, that allows you to create a network data set based on OpenStreetMap data. So you run this create OpenStreetMap data set tool, network data set tool, and it'll create a network data set out of the feature classes that you created with the other tools. And then you can actually do routing. And you can use all the routing tools that Esri provides out of the box. So you can select a point, select another point, click route, does the route. I was fortunate enough to do my screenshot. Well, this is the one from Tokyo. But um, I was playing around with it earlier. And I did it in Portland. And the network information is really good in Portland, which is fortunate, because there's places where it's not. So I was playing with this um, yesterday. Go away so you can see the rest of this. Away. So I, I chose a point, I chose another point, I click the route button, it shows me this route, and then I, I can click uh, this little directions button and it brings up the actual directions of turn right, turn left, yada yada yada. Um, if I want to see that great symbology, I can turn that on again. You know, so use it. Let us know. You know, there's the sky's the limit. Why not? thing um, that's pretty nifty uh, is our server component. So this is kind of for not the faint at heart. 
this use case is as such. You are an organization. You want people to contribute to your data set. You know they don't have ArcGIS desktop, other tools. You want them to only contribute very specific features. Um, you create your own symbology, your own features that you're interested in that are from OpenStreetMap. You serve it out as a feature service. They can consume it on mobile devices. Um, we make it easy to do that with this server component, which is a separate download. Um, it's still on the same website, it's just you can either download the desktop or the server component. Uh, after installing it, this is what the administrative interface is going to look like. You can zoom into an area um, and you fill out some stuff. You give it the feature service a name, you select a template, you can create your own template. So emergency response is one template that comes with it out of the box. You create another template just by designing your own MXD, doing your own symbolization, and putting it in the config file. So this could be mountain trails, it could be rock climbing routes, it could be favorite places to eat, whatever. Or whatever you want your workers to work on. Emergency response and you know, better bathroom locations, whatever. You can select that from the list. And then you can choose whether or not you want this feature service to be synced with OpenStreetMap or not. If you choose it to be synced, then you put in your username and password for OpenStreetMap, and you select how many, um, the time interval for when you want it to sync back to OpenStreetMap. And sync means it gets the latest data and it pushes your edits back up. So everyone who's editing is going to be syncing back to OpenStreetMap. So you can, in real time, update OpenStreetMap through these, um, this feature service here if they're consuming on their mobile devices, or not. If you don't check this box, then it's just syncing your feature service. And everybody's communicating that OpenStreetMap is the base map. So that's powerful, and maybe there's a workflow that suits your needs, maybe not, but it's a, a nifty thing you can do. Uh, and so this is um, also with that uh, feature service creation tool, um, we provide a simple sample editor. This is very simple, it's not meant to be production, it's just an example. After you create the service, you can launch it in this little editor and see, oh yes indeed, it did create my feature service, and I can kind of play with it a little bit in this JavaScript editor, um, but really consume it in something that's consume it in any kind of client that can consume feature services. So just the takeaways. Uh, Esri wants to provide you with not only nifty but useful tools. Our team is small. So you think Esri might think, oh, someone told me you're the underground gorilla. Like our team is our team is small and we would love your input and we'd love your help and uh, we want to give you useful things. We don't want to give you things that aren't useful because it's you know it's not fun to work on things that aren't useful, and people say, oh, I never use that, I hate that. Um, and, and generally, we get that feedback, we don't build those features. So tell us what you need, and, and we'll look into building it. Um, or build it yourself, and tell us, and we'll work in it. Uh, we want to support powerful communication, editing, and analysis, analysis workflows. And those are the things that ArcGIS is really well suited for. If you're looking just to drop a point on the map, or I know update a new building location, by all means, use the simple, good, fast, tools that are out there. Um, but if you've got deep GIS workflows, you're already working in ArcGIS and you want to leverage that OpenStreetMap, this is the tool set you really want to know about. And this is where you can get the tools, and they're free. Um, so that's it. Um, do you have any questions? All right. We also have a table out there with handouts that's on a lot of these points, so you can come by the table and get